For the best liberty-oriented talk 24-7, visit lrn.fm. So here's an ethical question for you. Is it right to actively, you know, try to cost the government money? I mean to initiate that process against the government. I'm not talking about defending yourself in court necessarily. That does cost the government money, but they're the ones choosing to make you be in court. I'm thinking more along the lines of suing the government or proposing 20 different House bills and forcing the State House to go through the expense of hearing them all and the time. In my own actions, I've sort of fallen on both sides of this ethical question. Uh, prior to 2006, I didn't have any qualms about uh, you know ha uh, getting a House bill submitted. I had two bills submitted around 2006, and I went to the hearings and tried to take them through the process and turn them into law. And later on, uh, one of the liberal activists in New Hampshire, Chaz Prohl, kind of called me out on it, and he said, well, you know, that's costing us $1,500 $1, per hearing, or, or rather, per bill. And, you know, I have to say I listened to Chaz at that time and uh, took his advice and quit submitting bills because I thought, well, I really don't want to add expense. To, I don't want to create taxpayer expense. That's not really what I'm here for. On the other hand, when, when you're in a conflict uh, to be a more worthy opponent, you're supposed to kind of cost your enemy resources. The uh, the ethical uh, dilemma is sufficiently severe that I just, uh, I've been kind of paralyzed into inaction since 2006 when it comes to action that costs the government money. The most I've done is sort of, you know, with uh, my feet dragging and kind of reluctantly, uh, I have kind of reluctantly, you know, sued the government of Nashua back in, I guess, 2011 after its police arrested me for, uh, well, I'm still not sure exactly what. Some people say it was for walking backwards at a Joe Biden event. But anyway, although I didn't have any qualms about beating them in court defensively, the uh, idea of suing them uh, over the years that followed the initial filing of the lawsuit, I became increasingly uneasy ethically about the whole idea that we might end up, well, what would I do if there was a monetary settlement and I was going to be getting money from the government of Nashua? If that were to happen... Would it be ethical for me to take such money? Would it even be ethical for me to redirect it somewhere? Would that be an act of aggression against taxpayers? I don't know. But again, in my actions though, over the last 10 years, I have sort of just tried to err on the side of caution and generally not do anything that would cost taxpayer expense. Having said that, this gets even more complicated, there is always a part of me that wonders... You know, should we automatically treat the taxpayer as though she is a bystander, a good guy? Should we automatically consider it an act of aggression against them if we weaken the people who are tormenting them by costing them money? Sure, the government that torments them will want to come after them for more money if we cost that government more money. But, uh, especially in the federal case, you know, the taxpayer, the federal taxpayer, who's voluntarily turning over forms and some of their income, to what extent is that person really a bystander? And to what extent are they actually reluctant accomplices in all the evils that the central government commits? Should we automatically be putting them on a pedestal, coddling them, protecting them from the central government, or is there maybe a case to be made for just going forward with weakening the government? Obviously, there are a thousand ways to do that. I mean, I say, I mean, financially weakening it. There are a lot of, uh, at least technically peaceable ways that you can do that. I've, I've witnessed it in court when, I, when I've been to federal court and watched just, you know, relatively average people really gum up the system in there with lawsuits and, and stuff like that. I mean, making these judges earn their pay, tying up political parties with almost no expense. I couldn't, you know, it's too hard to make the ethical call for me to want to go do that kind of thing, but I'm reluctant to condemn it. 
It's just, it's an ethical question that should be thrown out there. And I don't know if I'm articulating it, articulating it as simply as I probably should, but I think the idea should be thrown out there and I hope more of you will discuss it because I don't, I don't really have my mind fully wrapped around it yet. For now, I guess we should call it the weakening government through expense question. LRN.FM, 24 hours of Liberty Radio every day. Now available on satellite, too, at sat.lrn.fm. That's what a satellite sounds like. Put it on your unlicensed station. Wear it in your hair. But above all, don't despair. The Liberty message is getting out. And right now, you're missing it. Or maybe you're not. But skip on over to LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them. In a household, the family always deals with questions on budget and spending. Questions like, what do we need? How do we earn the money? How much do we already have? What do we spend it on? When and where do we buy the things we need? Were we able to buy everything we needed last month? Did we spend our money wisely last year? These questions seem all too common, but not asking and not dealing with these simple questions can lead to very dire consequences. However, keeping all these simple questions in check, the family's money can be efficiently allocated to meet all the family members' needs. Think of your government like a household, only bigger. It has to go through the same process in managing its family members' resources. Every citizen is a family member. Every citizen's need is a concern of the whole country. This process is called the Public Finance Management, or PFM. In a family, the parents work and their combined income constitute the whole household's asset. The government, on the other hand, gets its money from various sources, including income, business and other taxes, loans and aid from donors, and multilateral agencies. Like a mother looking after her beloved children, the three main goals of public finance management are efficient allocation of resources, distribution of income, and macroeconomic stabilization. Because resources available to government are limited, the state must be able to prioritize when and where these limited resources should go. The act of spending results in the transfer of resources from one sector to another. Thus, distribution of resources should be distributed to different income levels and sectors. Sound management of resources should be a means to overall fiscal discipline that can sustain growth with proper safeguards from economic crisis. So why should you be concerned with PFM? Remember your country's piggy bank? Part of it is from your taxes. That means your country is managing part of your wealth. And as a citizen, you are the ultimate beneficiary of public finance management. Your needs should come first. Planning should have you in mind, and services should help increase your quality of life. Managing the finances of a single household requires participation of every member of the family, not just the parents. Likewise, managing an entire country's resources requires the efforts of a lot more actors, not just the government. In a household, the financial questions do not end. Once the family analyzed what happened with their resources the previous month or year, new needs arise and new questions follow. In a country, this is called the public finance management cycle. The planning stage involves the identification of needs, priorities, strategies, policies, and programs. Budgeting entails the identification and allocation of the country's resources. This involves securing money for priority programs across agencies and sectors. Managing expenditure is the implementation of the budget and is carried out through the fiscal year. This also includes the procurement of goods and services. 
Performance assessment entails evaluating government spending in relation to priorities and goals set during the planning phase. This stage answers questions of accountability. Like the members of a family working together to maintain the family's resources, you and other citizens have roles to play in the various phases of the PFM cycle. In many instances, the participation of citizens lead to better identification of needs and prioritization of programs. As citizens, monitoring how the government allocates its money allows you to understand and give feedback on which needs are not being sufficiently met. Participatory expenditure tracking involves citizens looking at the implementation of government programs and delivery of services. Procurement monitoring, on the other hand, empowers citizen monitors to participate in the bidding and awarding of contracts. Citizen scorecards and participatory audit are two mechanisms that citizens can use to hold government accountable. So, what is the significance of this cycle? In order to ensure social accountability, the link from one stage of the PFM cycle to the next must be sustained. The PFM cycle is not the sole territory of few people. It should be a partnership between citizens and their government. As direct stakeholders of this process, you can help ensure that everyone benefits from every step of the public finance management cycle. <laughs>